Grim news that's come in over the weekend from Kashmir as Park Terror has again reared its ugly head. Terrorists have shot dead two non-local labourers in the Kulgam district of Jammu and Kashmir. As per reports, unknown gunmen barged into the house of migrant labourers from Bihar and Kulgam and fired upon them. Two migrant labourers died, one is injured. In fact, uh, rattled by the peace clearly in Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan-backed terrorists in the last two weeks have killed 11 civilians in the valley. In the wake of these attacks, police have also launched a massive crackdown. They've detained about 900 people across the Union territory for alleged links with terrorists and for helping them. Shiv Sena MP Priyanka Chaturvedi slammed the centre saying that there was clear inaction to contain such civilian deaths in the valley. You heard a lot of politics, really, a lot of the opposition leaders questioning the government. RJD's Tejasvi Yadav has, in fact, blamed Nitish Kumar for not creating enough employment and forcing people from Bihar to head to other states to look for jobs. Sena, police, tatha hamare paramilitary forces ke bahadur jawanu ne Kashmir ghati mein tabur tod operation karke आतंकवादियों की कमर तोड़ के रखी है और बोखलाहट में आके डेस्पिरेशन और फ्रस्ट्रेशन में आके आतंकवादियों ने यह जो जघन्य अपराध कश्मीर के अंदर फिर से किया है इसकी भारी कीमत इन पाकिस्तानी दुर्रांत आतंकवादियों को चुकानी पड़ेगी कश्मीर के अंदर स्थितियां भयावह हो गई हैं और भयानक स्थिति बन चुकी है ऐसा लग रहा है कि जैसे युद्ध जैसी स्थिति कश्मीर के अंदर उत्पन्न हो गई है और राज्य सरकार जो है वो मूल दर्शक बनकर देख रही है राज्य सरकार का पूरी तरह फेल होना हम सरकार से अपील करते हैं कि सरकार जल्द से जल्द लेफ्टिनेंट गवर्नर सिन्हा साहब को पद मुक्त करे क्योंकि वो असफल साबित हुए हैं अपरिवासियों की सुरक्षा के लिए now, with the situation as it is in the valley, there's a clamor to cancel the India-Pakistan T20 match after targeted killings in the valley of civilians. You've got the father of a Golgapa seller who was killed by terrorists in Srinagar uh, and to Punjab minister Pargat Singh. They're all demanding the cancellation of the India-Pakistan T20 match, which is scheduled to happen on October 24th. <laughs> The most awaited cricket clash in the world on October 24th. I don't think he saw that. Clash of the cricketing titans. The mega face off. India versus Pakistan. All eyes are on India and Pakistan's T20 World Cup match in Dubai. But the spurt in civilian killings across Jammu and Kashmir and Pakistan pushing terror infiltrators leading to deaths of Jawans casting a shadow on the cricketing event. Listen into this anguished father of 30-year-old Golgappa seller Arbin Kumar Saha from Bihar, who was shot dead by terrorist on Saturday in Srinagar. The grieving father has also demanded an ex gratia of 50 lakh rupees and strict action against Pakistan's sponsored terrorists. The Cancel India-Pakistan match chorus has been joined by Punjab Minister Pargat Singh. Pakistan has been given 9 young people to our country. And from the top of this 2020 match, what is this going to happen? What is this going to happen? Look, it doesn't need to happen. देखो आज जिस दौर से हम गुजर रहे हैं अल्टीमेटली वो हमारा पड़ोसी है लेकिन पड़ोसी को पड़ोसी की तरह बिहेव करना चाहिए डिस्पाइट द क्लैम टू स्क्रैप द इंडिया पाकिस्तान टी ट्वेंटी क्लैश फॉर्मर जे एन के सी एम फारूक अब्दुल्ला बैटेड फॉर फ्रेंडशिप विद पाकिस्तान मैं समझता हूँ कोई भी रास्ता दोस्ती की तरफ ले जाए वो अच्छा है और हमें अल्लाह से ये उम्मीद करनी चाहिए कि हम दोनों मुल्कों में दोस्ती हो एक हम हंगी हो द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट मे नॉट हैव मच टू से इन कैंसिलेशन ऑफ द मैच ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय आईसीसी बट इट हैज इंडिकेटेड दैट एंगेजिंग पाकिस्तान ऑन टेरर इज वेरी वेल ऑन द एजेंडा न्यू दिल्ली हैज कॉल्ड अ मीट ऑफ एनएसए ऑन अफगानिस्तान एंड पाकिस्तान इज आल्सो एन इनवाइटी विद रोहित सिंह इन पटना ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे
Durga Puja celebrations last week were marred by violence in Bangladesh. At least five people were killed, many left injured after an unruly mob unleashed violence in many parts of the Muslim-dominated country. Here's why all of this chaos and violence broke out. Minority Hindus targeted, temples vandalized, widespread violence marred Durga Puja celebration. At least five killed and scores injured in communal unrest in neighboring Bangladesh. All this over alleged blasphemy incident at a Durga Puja pavilion in Komila, about 100 kilometers from Dhaka. leading to havoc unleashed by unidentified bigots. The violence erupted in more than a dozen districts across Bangladesh. The unruly mob attacked the Iskon temple in Naukali on the last day of Durga Puja on Friday. Hundreds of protesters brutally attacked priests and devotees. One devotee, Parth Das, was brutally beaten up and killed. His body was thrown in the pond and found on Saturday. আমরা অবস্থান করছি আন্তর্জাতিক কৃষ্ণ ভাবনার মধ্যে সঙ্গে ইসকন মহাখালিতে এখানে একদল সন্ত্রাসী বাহিনী এসে আমাদের পুরো মন্দির রথ মন্দিরের গাড়ি প্রভুপাদের বিগ্রহ থেকে শুরু করে দুজন ভক্তকে মেরে ফেলেছে Security has been tightened across several sensitive areas after days of communal violence during Durga Puja celebration. The paramilitary border guard Bangladesh has expanded the vigil to more than half of total 64 administrative districts. The violence forced is going to dial Prime Minister Narendra Modi and UN to interfere and ensure peace. प्रधानमंत्री के जो सेक्रेटरी उनसे बात किया कि बता और प्रधानमंत्री से रिक्वेस्ट करने के लिए बोला कि वो बांग्लादेश के प्रधानमंत्री से बात करें और हम लोग ने यूनाइटेड नेशन में भी चिट्टी भेजा है सेक्रेटरी जनरल को और हम लोग ये डिमांड कर रहे हैं कि इमीडिएटली यूनाइटेड नेशन है किस लिए आखिर इंडिया हैज टर्म द वायलेंस डिस्टर्बिंग एंड इंडियन हाई कमीशन अलोंग विद द कंसुलेट्स आर इन क्लोज कांटेक्ट विद अथॉरिटीज इन ढाका इंडिया मस्ट with uh, extend necessary help to Sheikh Hasina to ensure that Hindus can live in Bangladesh in peace without fear of uh, persecution. The members of ISKCON Kolkata staged a protest in front of Bangladesh High Commission in Kolkata demanding justice. Appeal to the Indian government uh, to raise their voice, to do something to extend uh, security and support for the devotees who are threatened in Bangladesh. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has issued a tough warning on Wednesday. She said that those involved will be hunted down. <laughs> মামলা রুজু প্রক্রিয়াধীন আছে আমরা চাই যে ক্ষতিগ্রস্ত ব্যক্তি ওনার পক্ষ থেকে অভিযুক্তি দায়ের করা হলে সেই মামলাটা ভালো হবে সুন্দর হবে এখন অভিযোগ যাবে মামলা হবে যতগুলো ঘটনা ঘটেছে প্রত্যেকটাকে কেন্দ্র করে মামলা হবে Across the border the recent attacks created a political storm TMC has called for action the state BJP met ISKCON officials and announced protest against attacks on temples বিশ্বাস করি যে হাসিনা সরকার ধর্ম নিরপেক্ষ সরকার তারা নিশ্চিতভাবে যথাযথ এর অ্যাকশন নেবে সো কল সেকুলার মমতা बनर्जी जो बंगाली बंगालियों का स्मिता की बात करती हैं आज कहां है किस बिल में छिपी है शेख हसीना के राज में वहां इतना बड़ा जुर्म हुआ है एक बार भी उनका जवान नहीं निकल रहा है द माइनॉरिटी हिंदू कम्युनिटी मेक्स अप अबाउट 10% ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन इन बांग्लादेश but has suffered religious persecution with Indrajit Kundu and Prema Rajaram in Kolkata and Mazar Islam Khan in Dhaka, Bureau Report, India Today.
Let's get you the latest updates this morning also on the fallout of the Lakhimpur violence. The Samyukt Kisan Morcha, which is a farmer organization, has intensified its campaign against the sitting MOS home Ajay Mishratheni. The umbrella body of over 40 farm unions has called for a nationwide rail roco agitation today. They're demanding the dismissal of the MOS home because his son is in custody for his alleged role in the Lakhimpur Kheri violence. The six-hour rail roco agitation will be held from 10 a.m. right up to 4 p.m. today. Rail traffic will be obstructed by protesters all over the country. The farmers are also organizing Shahid Astikalash Yatras across different states. In a statement, the Samyukt Kisan Morcha declared that these protests will be intensified now in the days ahead till justice for the killed farmers isn't ensured for the farmers who died in Lakhimpur. The Samyukt Kisan Morcha is also demanding the arrest of Minister Ajay Mishra. Remember, Ajay Mishra's son, Ashish Mishra, was arrested after 12 long hours of questioning on October 9th. There's a controversy that's playing out this Monday in Karnataka over a proposed survey of illegal churches. The Legislature Committee on Backward Classes and Minority Welfare in Karnataka has proposed a survey of churches in the state. Now, this survey aims to set up a panel to check illegal constructions. The survey conducted by government authorities and district deputy commissioners will identify unauthorized churches and provide data to check for forced religious conversions. The Bengaluru Archbishop Peter Machado has reacted to the survey, uh, calling it futile and completely unnecessary, adding that no good will come of it. Archbishop Machado also called the proposed survey dangerous in the background of conversion bogey being raised time and again. He said that it could lead to the targeting of pastors and sisters. This is not a good move. It will surely not, it is not necessary. It is not helpful. The government itself has said that we know that 1,790 churches are authorized, the others are not authorized, etc. These kind of statements we have heard and we say this is not healthy. Incidents that are isolated incidents to color the whole community as being converting, this is not good. The situation in Kerala over the weekend has been very, very worrying as heavy rains and also landslides in some parts has claimed 26 lives in the state. Incessant rainfall and flood fury left behind a trail of destruction in several parts of Kerala, particularly in districts like Kotayam, Iduki and Alapura. They are some of the worst hit districts currently. An orange alert has been issued by the Met Department in these districts. Relief and rescue operations are underway. You've got three columns of the Indian Army which have been deployed in Kotiam, in Kotikal and also in Vayanad. NDRF teams have been deployed across Kerala to help in rescuing people. Prime Minister Modi, meanwhile, spoke to Kerala Chief Minister Pinadai Vijayan to take stock of the situation. The Prime Minister also offered his condolences to the bereaved families in a tweet. Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan, meanwhile, has warned citizens over particularly the rise in water levels in some of these districts. 105 relief camps have been set up, according to the government, for the affected families. Arrangements are being made to ensure that there are more camps that are set up. <laughs> Dramatic house collapse. Submerged homes. Properties destroyed. Cars swept away. Citizens forced to swim. Killer landslides 
wreaking havoc. Kerala facing the wrath of the rain gods as parts of the state go underwater. Thousands of lives have been affected in the last 48 hours. Kottayam, Patanam Ditta and Idukki districts continue to remain the worst affected parts of the state. India today continues to report from the disaster zones. What I see around this bridge, which have been a connectivity medium for the locals here from one town to another, in fact, one district to another. But in last two days, what has changed here, it is only devastation. These heavy metal rock cement made bridge almost was submerged. Heavy branches were flown by the river and now everything is damaged, devastated. And clearly this affected lives and livelihoods of this entire stretch. And the non-stop rain, particularly in this belt, is affecting the entire rescue relief operation. Everything has gone under the debris in this particular area. And from here, look at these images. The houses, those were located near this river, were completely submerged. Now, has turned out into a debris. You can see uh, the river Pamba is flowing at a rapid pace. Towns like Rami, Aramula, Korangeri and Malapalli were in flatlight situation yesterday, but the situation has been improved from the morning since the rain has stopped. The monsoon continuing its reign of destruction. Helicopter operations were undertaken from INS Garuda in Kochi to airdrop medicines and essentials. Personnel from Southern Naval Command, multiple teams of the NDRF, an army have been pressed into rescue missions. The relief material facilitated by the Kerala government were also being airdropped. Capital Tiruvananthapuram also saw flooding and water logging. This incidentally happens to be the drawing route. So if my camera person can show them, just this happens to be the sofas and here they have tied their cord because the rain every year causes lashing damage to the properties in the house this is their kitchen and if you can see we are standing in the water the mega deluge in the god's own country bringing back horrifying memories of previous flash floods which led to mass scale destruction with marina jacinth in tiruvannadapuram Nebin Matthew in Pattanam Titta and Ashitosh Mishra in Kottayam. Welcome back. Former Indian cricketer Yuvraj Singh was arrested by the Haryana police before being released on interim bail. This happened on Sunday. The former Indian all-rounder was arrested in a case pertaining to an offensive remark he'd made last year uh, to the scheduled cast. In an Instagram live with Rohit Sharma in June 2020, Yuvraj had allegedly used a castist slur that was aimed at spinner Yuzvendra Chahal. Even though Yuvraj had later apologised for his remark, a case was registered against him in the Hansi police station of Haryana's Hisar earlier this year. The Punjab and Haryana High Court, meanwhile, had already issued a directive stating that in case Yuvraj was arrested, the former cricketer was to be released on interim bail about furnishing the necessary bond. And that's all we have time for in this edition of First Up. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and a great week ahead. And stay tuned to us here on India Today. A few minutes from now, I'm getting you the top stories.